to you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in the sanctuary, and those of you that are outside in Facebook land. If you're watching us tonight or you're watching us tomorrow or another time, we want to say it's great to have you with us this evening. And we trust the Lord that the things we are learning tonight will be beneficial to us. Many of us will also gather something from it that we can share with people days to come. But we want to, we prayed away. We came here earlier for prayer meeting. But I want us to recognize the Lord in this house tonight. God is not coming in here unless he's coming as God. Amen? Amen. I want to repeat that. God will not come here less than he is. If he's not recognized, he will walk out. Amen. It's his church. Amen. 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 We're just going to worship. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, our Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you are eyes we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, our Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you are a voice we raise. You are awesome in the space, mighty God, and sing to Him. You are awesome in the space, mighty God. You are awesome, you are awesome. You are awesome in the space, our Father. You are worthy of our praise to you. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. How many of us know tonight uh, that there is an infilling that God has prepared for us? Right where we are, right where we are, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is in the house. Glory to God to, be, to deliver His gifts to everyone. The hearts of the people are open to respond. Glory to God. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. You're awesome in this place, out of power. You are worthy of our praise, and to you our voice we raise. Lord, you're awesome. Somebody receive your healing. God is in the house. God is in the house. Hallelujah. God is in the house tonight. God is in the house tonight. Praise the Lord. He is in the house. He is in the house. He is in the house tonight. Lord, we praise you. We praise you. That is your church. Glory to God. It's your church. You said wherever two or three are gathered together, touching everything concerning your name, you're in the midst tonight to bless and to do us good. Lord, we are so grateful that you are here tonight to bless us. Lord, here we are right now. Glory to God. You are here to do us good. You know the thoughts you have towards us. That there are thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts of prosperous to bring us to our shore. Lord, tonight it's your infilling we need. Oh God, as we come tonight to study your word, we are reminded of the two men on the Emmaus road. As they traveled, as they spoke about your death, not knowing about the resurrection, but you appeared unto them and you spoke to them. Glory to God, you broke the bread. Hallelujah, their eyes were open. We ask tonight that you would break the bread that we're about to study. Glory to God. We ask tonight that the bread will be broken. Hallelujah. And we study in our heart. 
minds to the whole and glory to God. Lord, we know so learn something more about you. And you're the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're the beginning, you're the end, and you're the first and you're the last. Lord, we lift you up tonight, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you, we exalt you, we magnify you. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. You're awesome. You're awesome. Eight and nine is proud, Lord. God belongs to you. We give it over to you right now. We give over the service. Lord, may the Holy Spirit be our teacher. May be our teacher tonight. Or inspiration. inspiration. Lord, we surrender to you. Ask that you open our hearts, open our minds. God Almighty, as John saw you on the Isle of Papas, may we see you in the Word tonight. May we see you in the Word tonight. Hearing your voice in every line. And to make each say the horrors. Lord, we praise you. We praise you tonight. Touch us, Lord. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you tonight. We lift you up tonight. Glory to God. We honor you tonight. We praise you. We lift you up tonight. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise only. Somebody give God a praise only. study the book of Revelation. Praise be to God. We are continuing on the book of Revelation. We're in chapter 14 tonight. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And the Lord open our eyes. Praise God. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Sorry, I'm reading 4 chapter 39. I need 40. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And none of you recognize that. I did. Amen. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood up on the mount upon Mount Zion. With him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their forehead. I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. And as the voice of a great thunder, I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. They sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. There, these are they which were. Not if as not, we're not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They are these are they which follow the Lamb with a sweary void. They were these were redeemed from amongst men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. In their mouth was no was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me stop there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelation 4, the, the book gets more interesting every week. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 14 begins with the Lamb standing on Mount Zion. Praise God. And with him 144,000 having his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. Praise God. The significance of the throne is important. Praise God in the text. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, Praise amen. God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The significance of the throne is important. The throne is important wherever it means that someone is seated on seated on it. The throne symbolizes anybody can tell me sovereignty, authority, rule or rule. The word throne is mentioned 
for those who are interested 14 times in chapter 4. Yet it is only used a total of 14 times in four, total of 14 times in the other 26 books of the New Testament. That is why chapter 4, when we studied it, is referred to as a throne chapter. Amen? Amen. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, we read, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat upon the throne. God wants us to know, as we study this book, that He is alive, He sits on the throne, and He rules over every given situation. Amen. My brothers and sisters, whether it's in your home, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in college, whether it's in school, whether it's in the street, the community, the neighborhood, God reigns. Amen. Amen. When Lazarus took sick, the response of Jesus when the message reached him, the sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Whatever we are going through at work, at home, at school, at college, at church, wherever, we, God needs us to know that he's on the throne. Mm -hmm. Classic example, and I don't, I'm not diverting, was Joseph. You remember when Joseph, remember Joseph brothers beat him up. They beat him. Mm -hmm. They beat him. And when you're in a group, even if you don't agree with what the group say, you have to comply. Mm -hmm. And they all had to agree and go and lie to the dad to say they found this coat. We don't know if it's your son. We don't know if they didn't see our brother's coat. Mm -hmm. We don't know if it's your son's coat or not. Mm -hmm. They sold him to the Ishmaelites. Their plan was to kill him. But they eventually sold him to the Ishmaelites who took him down to Egypt, sold him to Potiphar. He lived in Potiphar's house for quite a while until he was accused of trying to rape Potiphar's wife. He was put in jail. He was in there for some years, but the last two years he was able to help these two young men with their interpretation of their dream. The two years after the guy, the, bank, the butler came out, Pharaoh had a dream and he remembered, he said, I do remember my fault. You'll say, where are you going with this? When Joseph sat up in the position of authority and he recognized his brothers, he said, I want you to know this. God was in control. You meant it for evil and you thought you were doing it for some evil. But God meant it for good. He sent me here to preserve life. Amen. Whatever we are going through, God wants to get the glory. Amen. 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 I want to say it again. God wants to get the glory. Amen. He sits on the throne. The first thing he, re he revealed to John that on the Isle of Patmos that he was on the throne. He was the first. He was the last. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise, God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So what does sitting on the throne mean? Overseeing everything, isn't it? Overseeing everything. We are in charge. Ruling. Ruling, yeah. The authority. Mm -hmm. But the word sitting describes a king's position whose activity is reigning. Mm -hmm. If we have a politician and he's elected, we say if a politician is seated, he's said to be in office. And if an official is put out of office, he's said to be unseated. Is that what we say? Yeah. <laughs> he's unseated. God wants us to know him tonight. Praise God. Whatever burden we come with, he's, he's sitting on the throne. Amen. He's active. Hello, somebody? Amen. It makes a difference when you leave with that mindset. In um, Isaiah... Glory to God. 
Praise God. Isaiah 54, verse 7. Can I be again? Isaiah 10, 27, I believe it is. Praise God. It's what it's saying. In that day, the burdens shall be taken from off your shoulder. Which day? The day we recognize that God is active. The burden shall be taken from off your shoulder. The yoke from off your neck. And the anointing shall destroy the yoke. God is seated on the throne, meaning that he's actively exercising the duties. And we don't realize how active God wants to be in our minutiae, in our lives, the little things. On the throne, meaning he's active exercising the duties of his executive office, administering, administering over the affairs of his creation. All world believers is in the deep despair, sinking in the morass of sin, the quagmire of sin, and Christians seem to be getting the short end of the sticks. Mm. Recently, there was a, um, one country where, in fact, I think it's this country, where soon people will be charged if we take a stand against certain principles. The church appears to be making less of an impact upon the cu our culture. High-profile pastors are falling into sin as well as they have stopped preaching the gospel. We need to know that Jesus is on the throne. Amen. And for years we've been coming to church without realizing how active Jesus wants to be in the service. God has not been impeached. He's not Clinton. He's not Trump. He's not Nixon. He cannot be put out of office. Mm -hmm. He's not up for election. Mm -hmm. Cannot be unseated. He cannot be unseated. Dearly beloved, we need to realize this. God is on the throne. Important for us to know, even when we watch the news or read the newspaper, God is on the throne. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God is in control. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14 is interesting. Mm -hmm. And for us to accurately interpret the book of Revelation, the scene of the activity must be located where you begin interpretation. Chapter 14 is a good illustration of that fact. Many Bible scholars consider this to be a scene in heaven, while others regard it as a scene taking place on earth. This is infinitely important as it impacts our revelation. Tim Leahy wrote, and I quote, praise God. Remember Tim Leahy? He wrote the book, The Late Great Planet Earth. I remember hearing about it from 1972, when I first became a Christian, there was a guy, Pastor Williams. In fact, I succeeded him in I Wickham, an Indian fellow from Jamaica. According to Tim Leahy in his book, Revelation Unveiled, another thing we need to remember is that the book of Revelation includes parent, parenthesis. Anyone, anyone know what parenthesis means? Brackets, okay. Um, digression, afterthought, thank you, Brother Jim. Addition, additional comments, which should be pinpointed. Okay, that's parenthesis. And as you read the book of Revelation, Beth, one thing you need to understand is that the book is not systematic. Some parts you read, in chap some chapters, it applied to chapter 6. Mm -hmm. In fact, all of it, all of the book applied to chapter 6. Mm -hmm. Or chapter 6 applies to all of the book. Yes. In all the, I remember what I've said over and over. Chapter 6, 1 to 3, is three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And the rest of chapter 6 is another three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So the first year, um, three and a half years, when that Antichrist sits on the throne, rocking, riding in flight. 
is a three and a half years of peace. When the church is taken away, there will be seven years of tribulation. Three and a half years of that will be relatively peaceful. When the Antichrist will reveal himself, he will solve the Israeli problem. No president, no whether they are charlatans, quack, or whatever, they are not able to solve the Israeli, the Arab problem. This man is going to do it. When he, did, when he came on the when he comes on the scene, he will prepare and cause the temper, the next temper to be rebuilt. Amen. Hello? Amen. You hear me? Yes. This is the word of God. Mm -hmm. We have got time, but Jesus in chapter 24 said, When you see the abomination and the desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, mm -hmm. let him that is in the house stop, don't come down. In the field, the mountains don't come down. Woe unto you that are with child at the time. Mm -hmm. And pray that your flight be not in the winter. The Jews will accept this man. And after they accepted him, he will build the temple. They will have peace. But after three and a half years, he'll reveal himself. He'll offer a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus referred to when he said the abomination and desolation spoken of by Daniel. And he said, let the, the text said, let him that read it in bracket understand. Okay? Amen. Amen. Many Bible scholars consider this to be a scene in heaven, while others regard it as a scene taking place on earth. This is infinitely important as it impacts our revelation. All right? Praise God. The parenthesis of this passage covers Revelation 11, verse 16, and it runs right to, to chapter 15, verse 4. This is in the middle of the tribulation. Okay? Glory to God. Are you following me? Yeah. I'm going to be going verse by verse. An examination shows that the seventh seal judgment at the end of the first chapter, quarter of the tribulation, opens up into the seventh trumpet judgment in chapter 8 and 9. Chapter 12 and 13 describe events that culminate and culminate in the middle of the tribulation. Okay? Another thing we need to remember is that the book of Revelation, as I said, include parenthesis, afterthought, addition, comments, additional comments. Okay? Now, Revelation has a lot of activities. Okay? Here we find angels, activities, angelic activities as Jesus stands on Mount Zion. Okay? We find peals of thunder in this chapter, gushing waters, harpists, playing. And I heard the sound from heaven like the roar of rushing waters like a loud peal of thunder, the sound I heard was like that of an artist playing their heart. Let's look at it again. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters. Are you following me? And as the voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. They sung a song, as it were a new song, before the throne. Amen. Now, can you imagine this scene? I don't know if any of you have ever been to listen to a Philharmonic Orchestra, Brother Howard. Right. There's something um, in my study Bible here, Bishop, on, mm -hmm. at the bottom. Yeah, let's read it. There's, um, Take the microphone. 14. Revelation. Revelation 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I mean, you read it. And up there, it says, I looked, 
and I lo, the Lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him on hundred and forty-four thousand, having his Father's name written in their foreheads. But down here in the study Bible, it says, God prevent the plan of the beast from coming to fruition mm -hmm. by sealing 144,000 people, mm -hmm. thus keeping them from being killed by the beast. Mm -hmm. He will seal them with a sign on their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Read that again. He says, God prevent the plan of the beast from coming to fruition mm -hmm. by sealing 144,000 people thus keeping them from being killed by the beast. He will seal them with a sign on their forehead. And seal is a sign of ownership. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we look in this chapter and we see the Lamb. He stood on Mount Zion. He had a hundred and forty and four thousand um, having his father's name written in their forehead. Is this the first time we come across 144,000 people um, sealed? Mm -hmm. And if it is, if it's not, are they the same? Let me remind you of, because some of you probably not, and it's important, believers, that you, at least you play the chapter, the book of Revelation on your phone, mm -hmm. so you can get familiarize with it. The 144,000 in Revelation 7, they were of the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, mm -hmm. Isashah, Reuben, Gad, uh, um, Manasseh, the only tribe, the one tribe was missing. And a lot of people read it without realizing it was the tribe of Dan. And no one can really explain to you why Dan is not mentioned. Just as when you read through the book of Revelation and the book of Daniel, Zechariah, you will not you have not seen Saudi Arabia, one of the richest countries in the world. Um, apart from Africa, every country in Africa is rich and richer than the world. Okay? It's only because the people divide them and rule them whilst they are fighting the teeth away everything they have. Now, it is one, some people believe that Saudi Arabia, when you book in the book of Revelation, you don't find it. You don't find it in Daniel. It is believed that they'll be blown off the map. That's why people, some people believe. Okay, I'm not going to speculate, but I want you to notice that these people, the people in Revelation 7, the 144,000, they were all Jews. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You hear me? Yeah. They were of the tribes of Israel. Yeah. Okay. This group of people that you will notice here, number three, verse three, praise God. These people, according to the end of verse two, they are harpers. And they sing. Verse 3 said they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn the song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. So chapter 7 they were Jews. They were they were um, sealed to preach the gospel, okay? And uh, a lot of revivals will be taking place. When I say revival, that's where the greatest time of killing. You remember that film, The Killing Fields? I've never seen it, so I'm just seen. talking I've about, about it. it. Never seen Don't it. worry. I think it's about the Tootsies and the Ootsies, okay? Okay. Now, Believers, the, the killing that will be taking place on earth. There will be a massive effect from the climate change. That many of the punishment the believers will receive the starvation. They will be put in the sun. The sun shall scorch them. 
They live will be cracked and all of those things. There are similarities between these two and the four thousands. And two basic, re basic reasons are usually advanced for considering this. Both groups are 144,000. Both have things written on their foreheads. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. So they have what? The group, they both have in common the number. And the number is? 144,000. Mm -hmm. Okay? Secondly, they have something written on their forehead, in their seat. Some scholars view the difference. This chapter 7 group, there are 12 tribes of Israel. Revelation 14 groups, group, they come from the earth. And they come from among men. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. And before the four beasts and elders. No man could learn, listen to this, watch it, learn that song for the 144,000, which were redeemed from, from the earth. earth. Mm -hmm. So they came from amongst men. Mm -hmm. There is a word there that we should notice to see the difference. Is the Jews were 44,000 were chosen and seen. This group are redeemed. Okay? Yeah. The 144,000 Jews were chosen and sealed. Okay? Yeah. They got to spread the word. This group are redeemed from her. Notice they sing a song. Now, believers. Question to that. Yes, sir. So the first one is in forty four thousand. They they didn't they didn't um, know the song. So the, the only who person who can sing the song is just the one who was redeemed from the earth is hundred and forty four thousand. Okay. Um I'm not say that they couldn't sing a song. No, I mean, but a group this group in yeah. Revelation mm -hmm. sing the song of Moses and they sung the song of Moses and the, the Lamb. Okay. Yeah. Moses, when the Israelites came out, they sang the song of Moses. Are you following me? Yeah. Remember mm -hmm. Moses yeah. wrote a song? Yeah. Miriam mm -hmm. tuned it up and sang it with her timbre. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Yeah. Okay. You, you following me, Sister Beth? Yeah. Okay. Then I looked and there before me was a lamb standing on Mount Zion. With him, 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. The scene in Revelation 7 took place on earth. Look at this chapter. Praise God. And I looked, verse 4, chapter 14, verse 1 again. I'm just trying to distinguish. I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. With him, an hundred forty and four thousand, having the Father's name written in their foreheads. I heard a voice from heaven. John was on earth. Okay? John was being shown, being shown things, which was and which is to come. As the voice of many waters and the voice of great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their songs. I, I was asking if any of you ever gone to a Philharmonic orchestra. One of the things they say, a lot of the orchestrants, is that what you call them, the players? Orchestra. Orchestrants. Yeah? Orchestrants. Yeah. yeah. We can make up a word. If it's not the right one. Yeah. George Lee's made it up. It is said that for years people did not notice how deafening that sound is and the impact it has on their eardrums. Many of them have to be getting treatment. 
when, and this is just in um, our Royal Albert Hall or any of those auditoriums, okay? The sound is deafening. But when the grand crescendo of that orchestra rise, it's, it, even if you're bald, down here, stand up on your head. On your heart. Amen. Praise God. For those of you, a, 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 a amputated man, with a man with an amputated leg, still feel pain in his toes. Yeah. And bald head people still feel here. Yeah. Just want to let you know because some of you think that we're just bald. Amen. Um, when you go to a Philharmonic orchestra and that sound without microphone is echoed, reverberates all over the auditorium. It's such a powerful event. Here is 144,000 playing harp. They're singing a song. Believers, this is one of the most greatest experiences mm -hmm. one can ever have. When God's orchestra is playing, play, there's no discordant of sound. Mm -hmm. It's one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I talked about the Lord Nelson in the sermon on Sunday. When he died, and they're bringing the body to the church, as they brought the body, there were 30 trumpeters that were used to play as the body arrived from the, the what do you call that place where Prince Charles, um, where the Queen was buried. What's that chapel? That's, no, um, Westminster Abbey. Yeah. Uh, it's a Westminster Abbey. Yeah. Okay. And that's those 30 trumpets playing in unison was so loud. But he couldn't raise Lord Nelson's body. Mm. But when God's trumpet sound, mm. it will raise mm. millions and millions of yeah. dead. Amen. Because it's Jesus' voice yeah. will be acting like a trumpet. Mm. And the voice, the Bible said, my people know my voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In John um, 5, 25 to 29, is the trumpet is a voice. And God said, Marvel not that I say unto you that all that are, that are in the grave shall hear his voice. So the voice that will be sounded on the resurrection morning is a voice that called Lazarus from the grave. It's the voice that every believer know. Amen. Amen. Every believer knows his voice. My sheep yeah. know my voice. Yeah. So it won't be an angel's voice yeah. they will hear. Yeah. It will be the voice of the Son of God. Yeah. And believers, that will be the greatest sound that will shake every cemetery, yeah. every graveyard, yeah. the sea, yeah. everything. Yeah. Praise be to God. Glory to God. Don't let me start preaching now. Amen. So you will notice, or praise God, they sung as it were a new song before the throne. So remember, in this, this 144,000 in Revelation 7 were on earth. These are in heaven. I want to say something to you. Um, it is believed by many that there will be several um, resurrection taking place, more than one, in the book of Revelation, and during the tribulation. It is believed by many. Okay? You remember? John asked, Who are these? Hello? And he said, these are they that came out of her. You remember the two prophets in chapter 12? That they were seen and they also experienced resurrection. Glory to God. 
You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you read through the book, you'll also read in chapter 4, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice saying, come up higher. Mm -hmm. From there, he was able to see a lot of what? He was seeing. Okay. So any of you have a question? Let's read verse 3, Bishop. Yes, sir. It says, and they sung. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne. Mm -hmm. But he also said, and before the four beasts as well. Yeah. The beasts are um, mentioned in chapter 4. They're mentioned in other parts of the Bible. One of them either look like a cow, the other look like a bear. The other look like a lion, and the other will look like. Um, beasts don't mean ferocious beasts. No, no, no. What I was going to say is that they sang it before the four beasts and yeah. the elders. Mm -hmm. and they couldn't understand the song, nice, and they couldn't learn it. It's not that they couldn't learn it. What it means is that the believers' song, and you're going to be hearing, we're going to look at the angels carrying the gospel. The believers' song. Angels can't, even if they heard it, they can't sing it. Mm -hmm. Because it's the believers who have been redeemed. Mm -hmm. Only believers who have experienced Jesus can sing the song. Mm -hmm. Angel will not be able to sing or preach the gospel mm -hmm. in vain mm -hmm. because they have never been redeemed. Mm -hmm. And in a while we're going to come to um, several angels one of them is going to have the everlasting gospel preached. Mm -hmm. Let me come back to the song, Brother Howard. The song is about the Lamb. The song is about the Lamb. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So it's about redemption. They were redeemed. You found the term, I think, in verse, um, let me see. Praise God. They. Verse 3, redeem verse 3. Verse 3. At the end of verse 3. Okay. Redeemed from their earth. Earth. Thank you. So these are redeemed of people. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. They are they which have not defiled their garments. Only Christians can sing the song. Some terrible things gonna be happening on earth during this time. In Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 and 11, Daniel wrote, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, the hair of his head like the pure wood. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels are burning fire. Notice, the throne was like fiery flame. Fiery stream, verse 10, issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, the books were open. And I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and the body is body destroyed and given to the burning flame. This um, beast is not the of the four beasts, because the four beasts will be praising God. They will be God's people. This one is the Antichrist. Okay? Okay. Praise the Lord. Notice again the term that is used in the book. Praise God. It's like, okay? I heard a voice from heaven, verse 2, as the voice of many waters, and as a voice of, as, as the voice, or like the voice of great thunder. And I have Revelation 14. And I heard the voice of harpers. With their song. It was as the voice of great thunder. It's not thunder. 
okay? And they sung a song, as it were, a new song before the throne. These are redeemed people. Their songs will be sweet. Before the four beasts and the elders, and the man, no man could learn that song, but the 144 and 40 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with a slavery going. These were redeemed from among men, having his first fruit, being his first fruit unto God, to the Lamb. Okay, did you know that when Jesus Christ was resurrected, he took a lot of people with him? Brother Jim, how will you justify that? When uh, you brought your brother Jim the microphone, please, because somebody listening to him out there want to know. Yeah, when, is, when Jesus died and the curtain was rent in two, it also tells us that uh, when he rose, that people actually saw their relations, their dead relations, walking around. Walking up and down in Jerusalem, in the city. And the Bible said, when he ascended on high, Ephesians chapter 4, he led captivity captives. Yeah? He led them. Hallelujah. They had been redeemed, verse 3, from the earth. They were purchased from among men. Verse 4. Obviously, these men are the firstborn again by receiving Christ. These were first fruits. Okay? They are morally pure and have not defiled themselves with women, for they kept themselves pure. Some believe that it's referred to they were only unmarried, they were unmarried men that were qualifying. It's a possibility. Having met the, quali the qualification, they will share in the elite position with Paul, John, possibly, and others. Notice they were obedient and available, for they followed the Lamb with a slavery goes. Here's the goal we used to have a song, I will follow where he leading. I will pasture where we feed him. I will follow all the way, Lord. Oh, how those songs were a blessing us when we first became a Christian. When we go to prayer meeting and we were singing, I will follow all the way, Lord. It is also obvious that not all of God's children, but all his servants, are completely yielded to his will. Some have known years of yieldedness and faithful service only to go back and walk no more with him. A classic example is 2 Timothy 4 verse 10. Paul wrote of Demas. He spoke of him in Luke, not Luke, um, he spoke of him in, in Colossians. And he spoke of him, spoke of him in another book. And in this chapter, in chapter 4, verse 10 of 2 Timothy, he wrote to Demas, he said, Demas, having forsaken me. Demas has forsaken me. What's the next part? Demas, having left this present world. Having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. And it's sad to know that people of that caliber mm -hmm. who have seen so many miracles mm -hmm. at the end, Paul wrote to them, mm -hmm. Demas having first has forsaken me, mm -hmm. having loved this present world, and he's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's important that we notice these verses. 
They are marked, these 144,000 are marked by obedience. Their attitude is epitomized by the statement of the Apostle Paul, what shall I do, Lord, when the Lord appeared to him? He asked, what shall I do? And the Lord said, I will send him to kings, princes. They told the truth, which was the opposite of what Satan and the Antichrist was doing. No lie was found in their mouth. These men, in verse 5, these men are characterized by a contrast to Satan. They don't lie. I've always said to my kids when they were young, don't lie to save your life. They lived blameless lives. Verse 5, the, first, uh, the second part of verse 5. This does not indicate that they are perfect. For they had to be redeemed from among men. They were lost sinners who have surrendered to the Lord. Romans chapter 8. There is now, there is therefore no, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And Jew said there, you cannot condemn child of God. Um, Hebrews 14 verse 4 I believe said who art thou that condemn another man's servant to his master he either stand or fall who art thou that condemn another man's servant to his master he either stand or fall and in, Hebrew, in Jude the last four or five verses somewhere there he said he's able to keep us from falling. Okay? And to present us faultless. Not that we have not fault. But he's able to present us faultless before God. <coughs> These are the consecrated men. In Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, Paul wrote, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I no longer live, but I live with Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. It's important that we notice how God values consecration. Consecration means that we put God first. <clears throat> Amen. God comes first. God's business comes first. Um, Matthew 5, 6, seek first, not 6, there is a verse here, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. All these things, all the things we are seeking. These men did not come in fornication. And as some of it is alluded to the world of the church, they did not defile their garments. They tell the truth, no lie was found in their mouth. They are faithful witnesses. Glory to God. Let's move on to the chapter from verse 6. Here the scene changed. Believers, try and learn how scene changes in the Bible. I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. What is that saying to us? I saw another angel flying. Hello? In the midst of heaven. John was describing something that he saw. Janet, you want to say something? No, I just 
days, days you know, for airplane. Or airplane. Mm -hmm. So it is. It is also believed by many. Thank you, Janet. And it's not impossible because there are several pastors of their own plane. Yeah, several pastors. But this one will be very, very busy flying. He's flying with what? What is he carrying? Everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. Now, it's interesting here because throughout the book of Revelation, we find people are being deceived. People are turning to Satan. They are convinced by the false prophet and the antichrist. Hello, as we studied in chapter 13. So here, this person, it says an angel. I saw an angel. But most of you would recall me telling you over and over that in the Greek, the word angel referred to angelic being and it also referred to a messenger of God. Okay? Yeah. So although it says an angel, he's flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. No angel could carry the gospel because an angel can't re be redeemed, can't redeem. And they have, ne they have not experienced redeem. Not even Jesus Christ would preach the God, can preach the gospel. Hello? He came and he said they preached the gospel, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the gospel Jesus was preaching. The church preached deliverance. Amen. The church preached the cross and Jesus crucified. Amen. Are you following me? Yeah. After the resurrection, Jesus gave them authority to preach. Before he was training them. Hello? Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Yeah. Glory to God. The, the fact that he's having the everlasting gospel, it means this is a gospel that Jesus commissioned us to preach. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's everlasting. After 2,000 years, it has not diminished. He was preaching it to who? The people that dwell on the earth. And to every nation, every kindred, and every tongue. This person will have an incredible anointing. He's saying with a loud voice, give glory to God. Don't believe the devil. The hour of his judgment is coming. Worship him in that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountain of waters. You missed peace, Bishop. Huh? You missed peace. Peace? You said, um, give glory to God, but you said, say with a loud voice. First he said, fear God. Mm -hmm. And give glory to him. Fear God. Yeah. And give glory to him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I thought you said I missed Peace. Peace was there. Okay, brother. No, no, no. You okay. you missed that word. That's right. an important said, that's very, piece of the text. That's an important right. word. I thought, and Sister Bev and I were thinking the same. I just said I missed peace. No. Amen. You missed a, missed an important to right. the Fear God. Mm -hmm. Give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is coming. Um, it's interesting. And we need to take time to look at the text. Verse 6 introduced the first of five angels who convey a special message concerning the middle of the end time. That is the great tribulation. Is this an angelic being or a man? It's not an angelic being, it's a man. A gospel can, the gospel can only be preached by the redeemed. So we need to understand what is meant by angel. The angel will warn the people to fear God instead of the Antichrist. It's the Antichrist that will be on the scene that day will be the dawn. He's telling them to give glory to God instead of the Antichrist. And he will instruct them how to do it. Now the Greek word translated gospel is the word evangelion. Evangelion. It literally means good news. And the only way we can offer people eternal 
good news is to show them how we re to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. One of the things that was most powerful on Sunday to me is to see those little children coming forward. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And many of us think that children don't understand. They do. yeah. None of them were prompted by their parents. Mm -hmm. One of those boys came from London mm -hmm. with his sisters mm -hmm. to spend a weekend with his dad. Mm -hmm. Jackson was sitting here. Jackson came up. His mother didn't prompt him. Usually if a mother is prompting, the mother said, come, let's go. Mm -hmm. He went, he came up on his own. But it's the way the Holy Spirit is able to convict mm -hmm. and convict. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Fear God, not Satan. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote in Romans 1, is it 18 where are 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. One of the things this angel was saying, the hour of his judgment is come. Mm. The last moment has arrived. Fear God. Fear God. Believe him mm. before his wrath is poured out. Mm. And this is the first time the book of Judge, the word judgment is used in Revelation. Okay? Mm. The Lord is coming was a was a cry. Of this angel running all over. The 144,000 witnesses from all over the world will be converted through the printed page and the preaching of the word. Their witnesses will harvest a multitude that no one could number. Okay? The Lord is coming and it's the message that we must preach. Did you know that in the early church, if I see Bev on the road and I greet her, what's the word I would use when I'm greeting her, shaking her hand? Maranatha. Maranatha. What is it? Thank you, Janet. Mm -hmm. Praise God. What did you say, Janet? Because I think the people out there <laughs> is listening down here. Maranatha. Maranatha. What does it mean? The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. So wherever you see a early church member, I see them, you see them. You don't say, hi, Sister Bev, hi, Brother Howard. You said, Maranatha. Maranatha. The Lord is coming. Amen. Jesus is coming. Believers, oh my God, hallelujah. They were so excited about Jesus. They, they greeted people, Maranatha. Jesus, what the text say, look at it again, please. And then I want you to turn to Matthew 24, verse 14. The third, the, the, no, verse 6. I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. What does Matthew 24, verse 14 say? You're going? Mm -hmm. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then? And then shall the end. end. Okay. Then shall the end come. Now look at verse 6 again. He preached the gospel unto them that dwell on the earth and every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Did you know that the Bible is the most translated book in all the world? Did you know that? Did you know it's the best selling book in all the world? Yes. Every nation is hearing the gospel. Amen. I remember when TDN started, their aim was to carry the gospel to everywhere. They had Arabs that were Christian preaching it. So that they can broadcast it. They are Chinese that were preaching it. Hello? Mm -hmm. And the gospel Jesus said must be preached in all the world. 
Praise God. And then shall the end come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. So you see how the Bible synchronizes? Okay? How did they get the seal? We found this seal more than once in the book of Revelation. How did they get the seal? Come on, church. This is why we, our minds need to run through the scriptures. Okay, sealed by the Holy Spirit. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Can you find Ephesians chapter 1? Thank you, Brother Jim. Verse. In, a, in the book of Ezekiel, there was a man with the ink horn that was challenged, charged with put a mark upon the forehead of the, of the Jews. <clears throat> in the New Testament, there's a difference. In Ephesians 1, verse 13, what does it say? Believers, it's important that we bear in mind these scriptures. In whom shall we In whom shall we also trust? Trust in whom shall we also trust it? After that we heard the word of the truth. In whom he also trusted. And after that, after that he heard the word of, of truth. Of truth. The gospel of your salvation. What is the truth? The gospel, of your, the gospel salvation. of your salvation. In whom also after that you believe. In whom also after you heard it. He was you, were, you, were, you believe. He was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay. So it's, as Brother Jim said, the seal is with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God, and it means then that God is taking ownership of the seal of people. Okay? The same way we are sealed by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The same way, the same way, these people are sealed. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Can anyone tell me what that text says? I quote it all the time. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows them that are His. Believers, glory to God. When the seven sons of Sceva went to um, cast out demon out of this man. The demon writers leaped on them, tore off their clothes, stripped them naked, and said, Jesus we know. Paul we know. Who are you? Demon must recognize the seal of God. That's why it, bu it bugs me when I see Christians laying who are not, they are scared of the devil. They, people tell them to get rubber plants or bear them or things like that mm -hmm. to put over their door and to mark themselves up. Horse. All them foolishness. Horseshoe. Horseshoe, breadcrumbs. Yeah. Eat your no bread. <laughs> <laughs> Toast it. Mm -hmm. And it can be nice. I don't eat hard over it, but I kissed this song. That was very nice. Why are you going to put it over your bread, your door? You need to know you're protected. Amen. 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 That woman that um, taught us on the 2nd of March, that really impacted me. And she used the illustration of the Senate and the House yeah. in America. We have the House of Lords and the House of Commons. They make laws needed. Now, there is such a thing as the gates of hell that they decree, devil decree things in the gates. If you look in the Old Testament, a lot of decisions are taken in the gates. Even when Boaz wanted to buy roots, roots as his wife, from his boss, yeah. right. from his, yeah. from from yeah, his his cousin, first cousin, it had to go to the gate of the city. Yeah. That's where they discuss it, and we they didn't have writing and paper and writing pad like how we have, and the computer. So the person had to take off their shoes, 
Amen. As a sign that you have abundant there. I want you to know that glory to God. Hallelujah. God seals us. And the gates of hell, all the decisions Satan is making. The Bible said no weapon that is formed against you. But if you don't know your covering, you'll be running. The Israelites didn't realize how covered they were. So they saw a little um, um, statue on altar down by Damascus. They took the picture of it and took a copy of it and carried it all the way to Jerusalem and make it and make an altar. And said, here are our gods. These are the gods that protect us. Mm -hmm. Believers, when you know, yes. you are covered. Mm -hmm. When Amen. you know, yes. you are covered. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. You are covered. We are sealed. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the, the angel is, uh, proclaimed the everlasting gospel. But there's a second angel. Can you give me a time check, please? 2052. 2052. My God. <laughs> so like the preacher when the preacher was preaching. Yeah. The preach, preach, man. He felt like preaching. And he preached. Time gone. And he said, What time is it? Because the clock wasn't showing like this one here. And an old man got up and carried the calling and showing. That is not a matter of what time. It's a matter of which which day. Mm. You're gone past 12 o'clock. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank the Lord. I'm gone past 12. Okay. It would be nice if you try and listen to chapter 13 and 14 of Revelation before we come back. Even to chapter 12. Listen to it on your phone or read it. I'm not. Somebody said to me the other day, they heard me say in church to read it. To read the Bible on your phone is wrong. Mm -hmm. I would never say such a thing. Mm -hmm. The day I say things like that, I'm mad. Because I use the phone to read my Bible as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't use, I don't, to listen. I don't use it to read. I have my Bible that I read. Mm -hmm. But what I do, when I read, like I read it, Joshua 1, 2, 3, I think I read five chapters in Joshua this morning. Now, I like to listen to it afterward. The same thing. So it reinforces what I hear. So I'm not telling anybody that to read the phone, read your Bible on the phone, I'll be stupid to be saying that. But someone told me that they heard me say it on Sunday. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I will not say things like that. But I want you to, I'm encouraging you. As you read, listen to the Bible as well. And I would also want to encourage you. Don't go playing morbid songs all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people, they're always listening to down and out songs. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to down and out songs. Mm -hmm. My mother rebuked me. When I, I used to pray with her every evening, I come home and pray. And my one, I usually pray and cry. And my mom one day, my mom one day said to me, Olga, son, why do you cry all the time you're praying? Stop the crying. Stop the crying. You're before your father. You don't have to bow to impress him. That's why I'm a tear duck dry up. <laughs> Not because of mom. And then she, we usually sing a song. And I found this one one night. Trouble, trouble, trouble. My mom says, stop it. <laughs> she says, stop it right now. <laughs> she said, what's to talk about trouble, trouble? Sing something good. That lifts you up. And if, you, if you're singing something morbid and it's not, you're not playing it to lift you up, don't play. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't play. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Play something that will lift you up. Yeah. Don't go back to the same thing over and over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Brother Howard, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, I was saying, when I was reading this, um, I kept going back to um, 14, verse 7. Mm -hmm. I know 
every every word in the Bible mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you read something and it resonates and you keep going back to it. Yeah. And it's um fourteen verse seven and says, saying when the second angel comes, said, Say with a loud voice, Fear God mm -hmm. and give glory to him. Yes. For the hour of his judgment is come. Is come. Mm -hmm. And worship him that made heaven and yes. earth mm -hmm. and the seas mm -hmm. and the fountains of waters. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all right. It, it is a, it's a that's big a, statement. Yeah. And it's the only person we must fear. Yeah. Some people fear fear itself, you know. Some people frighten are frightened. Mm. You don't you don't you don't realize that. Yeah. There are people who fear fear. Brother Jim, you're not hearing me. Yeah. Yeah. They fear fears. Yeah. yeah? And they want you to be frightened too. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Don't be fear. Don't fear fear. Next week we're going to look at the, the, the next verse, the second angel. He, um, he, had, he, he shouted, Babylon just throw down. Amen. Babylon. Amen. Babylon. I, was, I remember when I first went to Bible school, Pastor Johnson and I used to come back. We came back in 76. And we used to go to the ink works in Bristol, the Rasta church. And I never forget the Rasta man singing. I hear the sound of the iron man say Babylon your throne gone down down Babylon is rolled on down. Hans Janet, after such a Bible study, we got to sing Babylon is rolled on down. But that's what it will be about next week. Okay, we'll be looking at which Babylon, verse 8. We'll be looking at what is meant. Is it symbolic or is it real Babylon? And think about it also. If Babylon, you know what Babylon is? What's, which country is called Babylon? Iran is Persia. Babylon is Iraq. Okay? That's Saddam Hussein was building it. He's building it. Stand with me. I want to thank those of you who were able to join us this evening as we studied the book of Revelation, the book of chapter Revelation chapter 14 and we went to verse 1 to 7 and uh, I trust you will go back and look over it try to study it it's a book that pronounces a blessing on readers and a curse on people who take away from it as we stand in the presence of God Remember every time you come to the house of God, God is there. Amen. Wherever two or three, we need to stop coming to church and come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wherever two or three, if, if we're coming to church and God can't touch us, something is wrong with what we believe, what we preach. It's only happening because we have taken time. We give time for pastors, time for bishop, time for musicians, time for worship, time for this, time for that. We don't even have to have a song when we realize God is in the house. Amen. Father, we want to thank you tonight that you're reminding us that you're on the throne. You're also reminding us, and we thank you that you faint not, neither do you but we. That where we're two or three are gathered together, that tonight you want healing. You want us to have healing. You want us to have deliverance. You want us to have breakthrough. And as you reminded us tonight that you're the throne God, you sit on the throne. Mm. Father, in every given situation, Lord, Joseph didn't realize how much you were on the throne, orchestrating and 
coercive things. And at the end, he could say to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. He sent me here to preserve mine. Father, tonight, you want us to be healed so that we can be a testimony. You want us to experience miracles in our lives so that we will bring glory to your name. That we can say to people, this is what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He saved me. Glory to God. Father, you're here tonight. Oh, that we would know man that is in honor and understand that perish. You crown us so often. You're you will never leave nor forsake us. You have crowned us with glory and light. We are crowned. Yes. Lord, we are crowned. We are yes. in Christ Jesus. Lord, we are blessed. We are blessed. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Hallelujah. God, we are so blessed. Blessed. God on my It's the curse of disease. You remove cover that we rejoice in what you are doing. Glory to God. Lord, you don't want Father, forgive us for coming to church. You have done over the years. Lord, you are saying now that I move in the church. All this. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, when the saints begun to pray, God, we pray tonight that your glory Jesus, our children, will see you. Our young they will go to school and gossip about what is happening. And what they have seen. Father, we praise you. We declare our We declare God Almighty. Feel that people, God will have to run to get in church early. Because of the glory of God, not because of the popular the popular song, the popular preaching of the popular preachers to touch us again. God, from the bottom of our heart our soul, we are saying yes. Completely yes. You want to be involved in the marriages. You want to be involved in the workplace. You want to be involved in the school and colleges. You want to be involved in the neighborhood. Lord, we solicit your help. Lord God Almighty. Lord, we praise you that you are there. You are there. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to love you more. Oh, for grace to trust you more. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God.